You know, I often ask patients when they're in the office and they're going through really hard times, and I say, you know, what do you think the number one cause of death is? And they'll say, oh, you know, diabetes or cancer or heart disease, heart disease, you know, is that? And I said, well, the number one most fatal cause of death is actually birth. So everybody, let's take a big deep breath with a sigh at the end. <sighs> None of us are getting out of the life. We're, we're all, as Jeff, uh, my friend here in the audience says that, you know, we're all on the Titanic, so let's have another drink. So we can lighten up about the life and death kind of uh, subject matter. But I wanted to share a story about my mother and my experience with her going to her process of, of dying, which was a really beautiful experience for me, helped me grow so much. And um, I was sitting there on Father's Day with my mother and my father at the theater. I took them to a theater to go see uh, Up. If anybody's seen this film, a uh, Pixar film, it was really an amazing film because, you know, it's a tearjerker and I wanted to actually get my father kind of in the Father Day spirit because he's always a little bit, you know, and, and so we're laughing about it afterwards and we're holding hands and, you know, I put my hand on my mother's, uh, you know, on her right leg and I say, Mom, what's this, what's this bump here on your leg? And she's like, oh God, now what? You know, my mother was a survivor of cancer, uh, breast cancer, twice around, and the second time was double mastectomy. So anytime you get another lump or bump with a history of cancer, it's just like, oh my goodness, you know, what's, what's going to happen? You know, and it turned out that I ended up being her doctor through the process. And, you know, as you know, having a mother, that's difficult enough. But to also be the, the person, I mean, it's basically Medicare and... Medicare and so I was saying okay well I'm gonna step up and be there for my mother in this situation and hard enough to be somebody's doctor through a process like that let alone uh, your dying mother and so that was a difficult thing for me but um, she was the longest survivor of this type of cancer which is a leiomyosarcoma which is a star pattern so it looks much like a star the way it will actually go through your body it goes very rapidly and you know, prognosis is about six months to a year after diagnosis. And the Medicare doctors would kind of murmur, you know, well, there's the option of you know amputation, you know. But that option uh, isn't really a great option because ultimately, with amputation, if you know anything about cancer cells, it typically will spread. And and with that particular type, very quickly. So that wasn't much of an option, and it was pretty much untreatable with chemotherapy or radiation. So we're like, okay. And she said, you know, I'm deciding here and today not to amputate my leg and I'm gonna live out the, less, the rest of my days as powerfully and as beautifully as I possibly can. Will you help me? And I said, sure. And knowing what I know, life is a river. And you know, we need to take the things that are in the river out of the river and get the interference out and add things that, are, that the person may need, like to build a bridge or something in this analogy to help um, the person begin that healing process if it's possible. With a, with a diagnosis of a leiomyosarcoma, it's pretty much fatal though. So it's a really kind of a tough diagnosis and it spreads rapidly. So I got to be her doctor through this process, which was a difficult process. And um, I got a phone call one day and I was on vacation taking a break, as any patients in here know I like to do. And uh, <laughs> I don't work a lot lately. But, and so I get this phone call, you know, mom's not doing well you know, you need to come home. I don't think, I don't think it's gonna go well. So I'm sitting there on the park bench and I'm, you know, it's just gently drizzling and I have the rain kind of falling on me and I put my hands up and I can just, I can just sense her. I imagine sitting there and I uh, start meditating and just kind of breathing and feeling it as the wind is whipping at my neck. And after I get through this powerful meditation and tears are streaming down my eyes, I open my eyes and I see all these children playing on the swing set and kids laughing and birds singing and you know uh, older people walking by with canes you know and people in wheelchairs and then there's babies even you know these beautiful little babies some of them brand new newborns you know maybe in for a day or two on this planet i said this is like an airport for souls i mean we're ultimately flying in and leaving every day and it's just this really beautiful revelation that i had there and my dad was always really struck with how powerful she was you know she was a mother of four boys four redheaded boys, and I remember one point she in the kitchen said, you guys shut up, stop fighting, and she threw a steak knife and it went through, it stuck in the door. And she had to be tough, man, you know? A bunch of little brain parts running around, you know, it was a Scottish family and this kind of thing. So, and my dad said, you know, it's where your mother is at, this is in the later stages of this diagnosis, he says, you know, it's essentially like she's about to jump out of an airplane. And when you jump out of an airplane, you've got your parachute on, you're ready to go, but it's like your mother is just standing at the edge of the airplane with no, no chute. 
and she's going to jump off. She might as well just jump backwards. Because ultimately, all of us will actually face that day, which is really kind of a beautiful thing. If you really stop and think about it, we always kind of want to run from the concept of death. But it was really powerful to see how brave my mother was in those moments. And, you know, a couple weeks before she passed away, she was really weak. And so she was in her wheelchair and she said, can you take me to my bed? I'm really tired and I want to lay down and take, you know, take a nap. And I said, sure, mom. So I, I roll her into the, with the wheelchair and she looked, she looked like she had aged 30, day, uh, 30 years and basically two weeks after um, a diagnosis that it had spread. I was actually the one that said, let's run, a, let's run a scan because your hospice doctors are saying, oh, that's just a normal cough because she's constantly coughing. And I said, mom, that's not a normal cough. Let's run the scan and sure enough, but that diagnosis basically, it, it metastasized the lung and liver and brain, and it was just like, she just kind of realized it, and it sunk in, and it's amazing when your consciousness kind of picks up, like, wow, this is really it, and it, it happens really fast like that. And so I pick her up, and I, and I start to swing her over to the bed from her wheelchair. She goes, you want to dance? And I was like, I'd love to dance. And she's like, da -da -da -da, you know, and we're just, we're just kind of singing together, and I'm holding her. And she's holding me like her, like I'm her child. You know, I am her child. And it occurred to me, I'm holding my mother like she's a child, because she's so, so incredibly weak. You know, she's frail. She used to be so powerful. And it was a really beautiful thing. I never told my mother that, but I had this moment where she was my child, and 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 I was her child. And all of us kind of, if we get that time to actually go through that process, we become like children again, which is. Um, it's, a, it's an amazing thing. And when hospice arrives, you know, it's late stage if hospice shows up. And when hospice arrives, you know, I'm there with her uh, at her bedside as much as I could get down there. And I had my hand on her leg. And I realized, man, this tumor, when I first found it in her leg, it was just a tiny little seed. And now this thing is almost 50 pounds. This thing's huge. And she, she had told me, you know, I want to thank you for all the years. She was a Mary Kay lady. And I had learned how to drive in one of her pink cars that she had won, which is awesome at 16. Being a redhead and awkward about yourself in the world. And I've got pink fuzzy dice, you know, and Mary Kay on the back sparkling in this glittering sun. It's awesome. So I'm sitting there with her and I'm holding her leg and I'm just like, this is so amazing. And I remember that I had uh, taken a course, one of the training courses I had, it was an energetic technique. And um, basically, it was a, a lady named Joan that had taught me this, and she's out of, uh, she's out of uh, Canada. And I asked my mother, I said, Mom, if it comes to the end, and you're really struggling, and it seems like maybe you're in pain, are you willing to like maybe work on the phone with, with Joan? Because she's helped hundreds of people cross over easily. And I don't know what that looks like. I have no concept for that. You know, I've never done anything like this, especially you know, uh, with my dying mother. So that was the agreement, and if she started to struggle and have pain, that we would, that we would be there for her in that moment. So here comes this day, and she's struggling, and the hospice nurse is saying, I think she's really in pain, so let's give her some more morphine, that sort of thing. And uh, I call Joan to, to help have her help me, and I help my mother in, in pain, and Joan doesn't answer. And I'm like, oh my God, what am I going to do here, you know? You know there's something we got to do, because I can see that it's, she's really struggling. So I had also learned the technique, and it's kind of like that uh, moment when a mother finds their child laying under a car. The mother's going to find any way she can possibly find to lift the car off her child, and here I am with my mother. I'm like, I'm the child. I shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> and so I, I sit there, and I meditate, and I get quiet, and I just put my hand over her. And you know, this sort of technique's a little more farther out there for some people, but it's working with cutting cords and energetic connections and you can do that relationships in your life or you do it with all those types of things but here it is I'm, I'm doing it with her around the concept of letting go and so I'm sitting there and I'm crying I'm doing this exercise with her and then I sit back down next to her and I'm brushing her hair and it was one of the most magical things to be there with your mother in a situation like that just like a child I'm brushing her hair and I can smell you know that smell of your you know everybody's mother obviously is different but you, you recognize it, that, that sound, that smell that they have. And it was one of the most magical things. And I could just, the dew on her forehead and just her presence. And it was just, it was a really magical thing. And I kissed her on her forehead and I whispered in her ear. 
I said, you know, Mom, we're going to take care of Dad. Dad's going to be okay. I know he's been your very dearest friend for over 40 some odd years. And we're going to take care of the family. And we're going to take care of the dogs. Like, everything's okay. You know, well done, good and faithful servant. And um, after saying that, I left. And I went home. And before, before I even got home, I got the phone call. Mom's passed away. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, what are, the, what, you know, what are the odds that maybe this kind of work actually helped her? And really her final lesson in this whole thing for me was to trust. Trust your heart. You know, trust your knowing that in those moments, you don't really have an option to say, oh, this is weird or this is hokey. Like, really trust your guidance because that's all we really have. And it sometimes takes a death to actually get to that point where like, oh wow, we actually really should trust ourselves. So of all the lessons in, in my life with my mom, it was really, that was one of the most magical ones. And it, it, no words need to be said, you know? It was just a knowing. It's like, I know this, this, was, uh, this was something that, uh, you know, I had an effect on. And I'd like to say, you know, you are not your apples. You know, an apple tree is not concerned with whether you come along and you pick the fruit. Matter of fact, the more you pick, the more the flow is, and you'll get more fruit, oftentimes, depending you know, on the tree. And so you are only what you give away. You know, If you're trying to struggle and hold on to things in your life, hold on to a relationship, hold on to uh, goods, uh, hold on to things in your life that you just, you're afraid to let go of, you don't own it. The only things you really own are your mission and your love and your passion and what you're really here to share with people on this planet. So remember, don't, don't hold it all in. Be willing to give away. And the number one thing is the, the love. And, you know, my mother, before she passed away, she made us all a gift. And on Christmas Day, we got to see the gift. You know, we opened up the bag and pulled all the paper out. and Everything's laying everywhere. And the four boys are there. And we all pull out these quilts. And there's these beautiful quilts. And my mom used to like to think that she was a novice quilt maker. And, but she's really not. She's got these amazing quilts. And I brought one here today that she made for me. And on it, on it, it actually said, you know, to my favorite son, uh, with all my love, mom. And I was like, yeah, favorite son out of four. <laughs> and the funny thing was, is that she had written that on every one of the, <laughs> every one of the blankets. And so she said, you know, when you miss me and know that I'm always here, you know, and you can put this blanket around me and trust me, in the last couple of years when times were tough, I put this blanket on. One of the most powerful things. And she says, just know that I'm here. So I wrap up in this thing and it's the most comforting thing. And what is really amazing is like in those times where I was really struggling, I would actually say, mom, mom. Mom, you know, you know how you do when you're, you know, you're a kid? Well, if you do that, say you're missing a loved one, call them like you used to. It brings up this amygdalary, uh, the reptilian brain, this amygdala response, and you get this emotional response, and it's really powerful, and you can feel the energy of them actually in the room with you. It's been the most magical thing. So be willing to give away your love, and uh, I'm so grateful for you, Mom, wherever you are. I love you very much. Thanks for sharing. Okay.